you know, I'm not sure that I want you to relive all of this by describing it for us. So well, that was say it. That, she, so she, drove, was, she walked in, the, in there with the keys in her hand, and he blew her head off with a shotgun. Now, he was arrested eventually. Uh, that night. And, and, but he bailed out. Oh, yeah. He was arrested that night, and uh, I think it was the sad thing was I just thought he was arrested. They had him in jail, and then I went in the... Uh, we went over to the cemetery and we, uh, after the funeral, and uh, my husband wanted me to get a loaf of bread in the, sem in the market, and I went in, and I, he was coming out of the market, but we weren't notified there, or anything. Standing stare, there, staring down my mother. Staring her down? Yes. Mad-dogging you, as we would say, right. out in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yep. What was no, that he like was sat on bail for a year and a half. But what was that like for you? It was, it was terrible. It was absolutely horrible. And he was and he was out on bail for a year and a half mm -hmm. because that's the way the laws mm -hmm. were then. And, and in fact, he everything was happening within the letter of the law at that oh, point oh in time. Yes. 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 yes, No, no yeah. obligation to notify us that there was a bail hearing, and no obligation to tell us to take our, our opinions into consideration mm -hmm. as to whether our, our safety might be in danger, uh, whether witnesses might be intimidated. Mm -hmm. And then you know we had to endure a year and a half of watching him drive around our neighborhood in a convertible. Yeah. yeah, his parents um, bought him a new people. car, and and then uh, he drive past uh, with his new girlfriend. Yeah, oh jeez. But uh, I do have to just you know, for the record, what was going on there was within the law. He was yes. simply yes, accused. Certainly. He was accused. That's right. Um, and as the system goes, he, that's the way. He, and uh, it was all a long that. time till the trial. Would it have made? Were, were you able to speak to him? It, it, nowadays, that can happen under. Uh, there, there, there's a victim impact statement, but you didn't have the opportunity to do that? Well, you can only have the victim impact statement, I think, after the trial. Right, right. But after well, the trial, were you able to say anything to him? Did you even want to? Uh, we were allowed to speak after the trial. I think that had just come in when our trial was over. In mm -hmm. fact, our judge, it's very interesting you ask that. Because I remember our judge said, this is a new law, and I'm not sure it's going to be upheld by the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you and your husband speak. And uh, I'm also going to let the um, criminal's parents speak also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we spoke, and they spoke. Mm -hmm. And that must have been... Yes, uh, that was very... Very difficult. Very difficult, especially when, especially when they got up and made a long harangue about what a wonderful person he was. Mm. Mm. What do we need to do now? Is, is, is there more, is there another initiative that needs to happen, or do we need to be um, talking to judges more? Well, I think we need to see the implementation pushed across the state. Right. Um, there are probably going to be a number of, of tests by, mm -hmm. the, by the Supreme Court. But uh, I think the most important thing that we need to do is to see the rights that, that Marcy's Law provides to the state of California, to the basic citizens, afforded to all the citizens of the United States. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, several years ago, there was actually a failed effort to amend the U.S. Constitution. And I think, um, you know, I worked with a, lot, a number of members of that team mm -hmm. to, you know, as part of the Marcy's Law team here in California, and I think uh, seeing this pass right now, with in uh, California, uh, which is one of the most, uh, most, uh, well, we're the, what, the seventh largest economic power in the world. Well, right, and, and clearly yeah. the most uh, uh, influential yes. of the fifty states. Certainly sets the stage for us seeing these these rights afforded to every citizen in the United States across and, the country. And the strategy at this point would be to do it state by state as opposed to a uh, constitutional amendment? Uh, a constitutional amendment, but I think one of the keys to doing that is to go to the critical states and do grassroots lobbying efforts mm -hmm. such as we did in California. Mm -hmm. I mean, the California effort, this, this was significant in that Marcy's Law came about as a result of the failure of our legislative process. So. Um, after this, you know, the California Safety Committee and our legislature looked at a comprehensive Bill of Rights and failed to pass it, mm -hmm. we took this to the voters. We passed a ballot initiative. It took some millions of dollars to right. gather the signatures, but then it was placed in the hands of the average voter, and the voters spoke. 
right? 54%. Oh, exactly. We need to take a quick break. We'll do that. When we come back, we'll talk more about Marcy's Law and all of the things that need to be done to protect the rights of crime victims. Stay with us. It's midday Sunday. We're talking about Marcy's Law passed by uh, voters here in California back in November. It's officially called the Crime Victims' Rights and Protection Act of 2008. Uh, Marcy Nicholas um, was the person for whom all of this was named. And of course, you would obviously wish that we had never had to go through this and name anything. Absolutely. Her mom uh, is with us as well as her brother. Um, I know you want to talk about parole and that sort of thing, but I have to ask, is there a point here at which you can be criticized for abridging the rights of the convicted criminals? Well, I think everyone has a right to a fair trial. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, in the words of Eric Holder, um, our Attorney General, um, you know, the presumption of innocence and the rights to due process don't need to mean silence and suffering exactly. for the victims. And there's one of the problems is that when the framers of our Constitution wrote it, it was accepted that victims had rights. They didn't bother to enumerate them because they were solving a great injustice, mm -hmm. which is people at that point, our country was the first country that said, you're not guilty till proven innocent, you're innocent till proven guilty. Mm -hmm. And the document was framed to embody that. The pendulum was now swung so far that people have forgotten those basic rights that weren't enumerated and they need to be spelled out. Right, right. So parole hearings, that's one of your big issues, yes? That you was had our a problem, is that criminals had all the rights and victims did not, we found, have hardly any. Mm -hmm. so. You went to a parole hearing. The first one. Yeah. Uh, it was, I think, seven or eight years after he was convicted of second degree mm -hmm. murder. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Which would be unpremeditated yeah. murder, spontaneous, without yes. malice of Well, with malice aforethought. Malice aforethought. Malice aforethought, but, forethought. Mal malice yeah. forethought, but Seven, no premeditation. 17 years to life back then meant mm -hmm. uh, you were eligible for parole mm -hmm. in seven years. Yeah. So now it's, 26, now it's 26 to life. Right. But you attended uh, parole the first hearing. parole hearing. Right. And. Uh, it was just a terrible experience. Mm -hmm. I've never, I had a heart attack in the middle of the parole hearing. Mm -hmm. And I think there again, you had this murder of your daughter looking across the table saying that he didn't kill her mm -hmm. when, uh, you know, you're just totally destroyed of course. In of course. inside, especially when, uh, he was so guilty mm -hmm. and he wasn't he didn't show the least bit of remorse right. or anything 